Howdy. Episode 22. Wish uh, going to be on ignition for a while. Uh, we covered plugs. The basics of plugs. And uh, the uh, basic function of plugs in the previous video. Um, we have a gap on the plug which is inside the combustion chamber. And we need to generate enough voltage to uh, ionise the air in that gap which includes mixtures or whatever mixtures or just air or whatever is in between there but the density of that and the pressure of that will change the amount of voltage we need uh, ionize the air between the gap and the uh, that uh, is a conductive path and then the spark will uh, leap across and we have to have enough energy to continue that spark for a period of time so that we get our combustion in the engine so we need an ignition system to actually drive those spark plugs and to fire them at the correct time according to our firing order which in a six cylinder is one five three six two four alternating being a four stroke um, each cylinder firing on every uh, second revolution of the crankshaft um, what we have for the uh, power a high voltage power is the coil and we have a switching mechanism for the coil in one half of a distributor and then we have a distribution mechanism at the top to distribute the high tension wire uh, voltage to each of the spark plugs at the correct time as you can see here firing order one five three six two four this uh, obviously has to be driven at half the speed of the crankshaft uh, like the camshaft it's usually driven from the camshaft or indirectly via a uh, oil pump and uh, rotates thus um, one revolution of this for every two revolutions of the crankshaft so it comes back to number one after two revolutions of the crankshaft um, one revolution of the crankshaft um, this one is on overlap this one's firing number six so it's down here so that is basic enough uh, that's just covering the basics of the system now we'll go into each of the parts of them and um, in addition to the function that the distributor provides of switching the coil on and off to generate the spark at it which I'll cover we have a system that advances the ignition timing with respect to engine speed called mechanical advance and that advances that small rotor um, in the, the same advances it in the same direction of its movement so it, it, it moves it forward um, opening the point sooner in addition to that we have a vacuum advance that uh, only operates during cruising and moves the entire plate to give us a, uh, a extra advance uh, for fuel economy when we're cruising and that is the basic um, Kettering ignition system. The ignition coil is simply uh, a container with a iron core down the center, a set of windings that you know, constituting the large a set of windings, a primary side at low voltage, a secondary side at high voltage. There's a number of windings around here of the thicker wire being the primary connected to points or circuit breaker of whatever kind whether it's um, uh, there's other systems I'll cover um, inside that we have a uh, coil with a, a thinner wire but, um, with more winds on it than the uh, outside primary wire and the result of many turns on the secondary and fewer turns on the primary is that we get um, an increase in the voltage with respect to the voltage coming in and the voltage going out so we have 12 volts in and when we open it up the magnetic induction in the windings collapses the magnetic field collapses into the into the secondary windings and we get up to 15,000 volts out of here it goes to the spark plugs via the distributor cap that coil was used for a long time um, with various ignition systems um, however it's not a particularly efficient coil it gets hot and uh, it is filled with oil for oil cooling 
later ignition coils this is the one I've just showed you later with the uh, pole in the center uh, the primary winding represented here although that's outside of this that's how it more looks like and this is a bobbin coil so it looks like it's wrapped around a cotton bobbin so the magnetic field travels roughly like that um, in the in the system and you'll see this type of coil is an e-type coil where the magnetic field is restrained to the center poles okay the difference being that this one doesn't run as hot it doesn't need to be oil cooled and it is a more efficient output the uh, downside of that is is that the metal inside it um, is um, not in oil so it's subject to any corrosion if that manages to work its way in um, like the other one it has windings the windings can be compromised so uh, we can test that you know with a test hot and cold in our um, primary and secondary to see if there's uh, a uniform change of temperature of resistance in the primary and secondary windings with an ohm meter the secondary uh, is a little bit more difficult to test because we have to test for parasitic insulation leaks parasitic voltages and uh, which will um, end up being a spark between the high voltage to the low voltage so um, it still has insulation challenges and because of all of this is is, is encased in a potting a hard potting mix if there is any small um, air bubbles inside that potting mix the air in that can ionize just like it does with the spark plug gap and that can create um, conduct, make it conductive and therefore um, compromise the insulation properties of the coil so these ones can break down similarly to these ones with insulation and um, in some cases where there's like a um, they look like more of a flat pack coil um, they're fairly easy to pick out but uh, nevertheless um, improved production um, these um, are an improvement on these by construction by efficiency um, and everything else so these are used uh, to common day um, with this kind of ignition uh, e-pole type um, coil now the method of um, the method of switching the coil windings on and off using the ignition points in addition um, which open and close with the movement of the cam which is on the rotor okay points open and close when they close the voltage is uh, the 12 volts um, energizes the coils the primary coil and then when the points open the field collapses into the secondary coil we get our spark so the points have another addition to them which is a condenser capacitor and what the job of the capacitor is to do is uh, as the points open there's a tendency the voltage to try and cross the gap between the points um, now the condenser does the job of continuing the voltage running down through the condenser rather than arcing across the points but that is only one function of it the other function of it is is that the capacitor is matched to the windings of the coil and it acts as an oscillation circuit so what happens is when the points open and the, and the voltage tries to come back to earth via here uh, and the field collapses we get an inductive spike of back EMF coming back out of the wire so um, what that does is it's it's an opposite polarity voltage which comes back that voltage is stored in the condenser in the capacitor which then discharges it back through the primary winding and then back again in an oscillation until the energy is finally dissipated from the coil and the reason that it does that is because after the points open and the field collapses to get the most amount of energy we have to increase the speed of the flux lines crossing over um, and we have to um, have it as have it done as quickly as possible um, so by oscillating that in in conjunction with the condenser we uh, get a, a much higher energy at fairly low engine speeds um, 
So the condenser does that function, um, and to watch it do that, you can use uh, an oscilloscope, which uh, I'll cover the patterns of, which we used to use, or I used to use quite a bit. Um, and uh, you can also observe that in, point, in the burning of the points. Um, now, the burning of the points can has a number of um, a number of uh, ways to diagnose what's going on. They're not just burned between the contacts. 